Hi friends, I'm Fosse. Today I'm here to give you my 2500 mile review of the Osprey XS48. Let's get into it. I purchased this pack in 2016, putting a few hundred miles on it, including the Wonderland Trail around Mount Rainier. I'd gotten very comfortable using this pack, and I knew it would be great to use for my first thru-hike. This pack was with me for the entire 2200 miles of my Appalachian Trail thru-hike in 2019. So let's get into the features of this pack and my thoughts on the pros and cons. This pack doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles, which is perfect for those who want simplicity. The body of the pack is a single large interior space with a hydration sleeve, which is where I started keeping my inflatable sleeping pad. The top lid or brain has two zippered pouches and is removable. I sent my top lid home after the first 500 miles because it was unused, unnecessary space. The pack comes with a stationary flap jacket that replaces the top lid. The airspeed frame and trampoline suspension is a pretty unique design and is comfortable and ventilates really well. This is a great feature for hikers who sweat a lot. You can adjust the torso length on the pack, but this does come in several sizes. The hip belt is cushy and the shoulder straps come with load shifters. I had them pulled up the entire trip, so they were never very useful for anything else. I never got hot spots or chafing from either, although I did bruise on my pelvis and collarbones, but I expected to. Osprey now makes a women's specific model, which I imagine has more contoured shoulder straps. The older models like mine have hip belt pockets and shoulder strap pockets, which are roomy but won't fit larger cell phones or cameras, but they work great for snacks. There are two side pockets and one large mesh front pocket. The side pockets can fit water bottles, tent poles, trekking poles, or any combination of each. These pockets do appear to be taller in the newer models. They come with a side access for easier water bottle removal. The lycra material got small tears that I had to patch, and I had to be careful of storing sharper things like tent poles or trekking poles. There are side compression straps on each side that can be laced on the inside or outside of the pockets, but honestly, I never use them, and they sometimes made it hard to put things into the pockets. I'll probably change them out for a single elastic cord along the top. The front mesh pocket is actually my least favorite thing about the pack. On this older model, the mesh has been so outstretched, and it no longer keeps my gear tight and protected in the pouch. The mesh is also really flimsy and needed to be patched several times, as you can see. The newer models use a mesh nylon combination design, which I've heard doesn't expand as well. The pack comes with an ice axe loop and sleeping pad straps along the bottom. I use this for my Thermarest Z light on trail and kept it on the bottom for the first half of my trip. I didn't like it constantly hitting my butt, so I purchased two bungee cords and strapped it lengthwise along the front of my pack for the rest of the hike. All Osprey packs come with this stow on the go trekking pole feature, which includes a loop for the tips and a bungee for the handles. This is designed to keep your poles out of the way and your hands free for scrambling. This feature comes in handy on the Appalachian Trail up north in the Whites and Maine when you're forced to do some intense climbs and descents. However, this feature works best for people who use telescoping poles. If you use Z-poles like me, you'll find it inconvenient as your poles will still be long and will continue to catch on things. I rarely use this feature, choosing instead to simply throw my poles to the bottom of a scramble section. The last thing some folks will say about this pack is that the frame can squeak under heavier loads. And I agree, although I never let it bother me. Most of my trip, my load never exceeded 30 pounds, but there were a couple larger carries where I had 35 pounds in my pack, and while heavy, I never found it uncomfortable. Overall, I'm pleased with this pack's performance over the past four years, and I would highly recommend it for beginner backpackers and through hikers. At $200 and only 2.5 pounds, the weight to comfort ratio is unbeatable. I'm currently moving towards a more ultralight setup for summer, switching to a frameless 30 liter pack, but I will continue to use this for winter backpacking or specialized trips.
If you found this review helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified when my next video comes out, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Hey, the gorilla's loose!